Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. And good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. And today, I, as always, love to have Tom on with us. Now, we haven't had an interview in a little while because Tom's been on vacation, <laughs> although I believe it was a working vacation, so maybe it's, not so much. Yeah, it, was, it was a working vacation. <laughs> it had to pay for itself. Yeah, it's well, not, not one of those where you go out and save a lot of money and then go spend it to have fun. It was a, <laughs> a working trip, but at the same time, it was a vacation in the sense that we went to a lot of places and saw a lot of things and people and nice. so on that we'd never met or seen before. So nice. it was a, a vacation and we had a little bit of R&R &R time, you know, mixed Hopefully. in there too, because it's hard when Keith plans the venues, you can't mm. always just get a room, you know, on the day of the week that you want, you know, right. sometimes it's like, well, we're all you know sold out now, but next week we have one open. Well, then that means you have to suffer uh, spending a week in Bali so that you can oh. wait for, yeah, oh. so that you can wait for, you know, the, 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 the venue to open up to you, uh, you know, the following week. Rather well, that than must the, have been awful. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, so we had a, we had a couple of little R&Rs like that that just helped <laughs> Keith plan all his stuff together. And uh, it was, that was a lot of fun. So there was some vacation Good. in it, just getting through it. Right. all getting the schedule to work for everybody at all these places all in a row you know right. it was kind of a daunting process i bet but yeah, yeah if you have to lay over bali might be a nice place to do it <laughs> yeah that's what yeah. keith thought yes. yeah I, I can understand that understanding oh that's funny okay so since we haven't i mean i was just so unprepared today <laughs> <laughs> However, I did have some thoughts and I thought we would play with them. One of them one of them is around the consciousness of relationships. And I mean, this is something that comes up a lot um, with, and I'll try and explain what I mean, but you know, if we have this larger consciousness system that is here, that is definitely to assist us to grow, and that's what we're here to do. And I believe that, you know, things happen and then we personalize them as happening to us and we include them as part of our experiences and part of how it defines who we are and we create this wonderful story, <laughs> okay, so not so wonderful, around who we are as a person. And so we have this larger consciousness system that is here that is helping us it's funny, I, this is another side, but I was reading something and, you know, was talking about, you know, how we have to climb the mountain. And I remember somebody saying, oh, you don't have to climb the mountain. You can come to me and I'll, I'll let you take a helicopter ride to the top. And why would you want to climb if you can get a helicopter ride to the top? But the truth is, we really do have to make that ride by ourselves. So here's this larger consciousness system that is here to assist us to get to the top of the mountain, to assist us to grow, to evolve towards love. So every time in relationships, and I know people don't like the words trigger, although I'm really not quite sure what word to use that means the exact same thing, I guess you know, coming from more of a psychology background than a spirit or a science background. Those are the words we use in, to understand. Mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, every time we have an emotional reaction, um, you know, we are, it's really not about the other person. And I don't know how to say that enough times for them to understand that even though it appears because of our experience, because of our story, because of all the things that we've sort of tied together of what we perceive is happening from that other person. We then believe it's happening to us. We get upset. We try to figure out either how we can change them or just try to understand them or instead of trying to understand ourselves, instead of trying to take the focus off of what's happening out there and bring it all back into ourselves. So that's one of the things. Then I got an email this morning and I thought it was an interesting email um, by one of your followers from Germany. And her thought was, you know, here we are and we talk about it a lot about being authentic. And so if you are truly being authentic, how then do you 
you know, how do you, how do you take the focus off of you because you're really examining yourself and you're wanting to grow towards love to focusing on, mm -hmm. you know, the love of others. And so, you know, how do we get out of that ego, I guess, place of looking at ourselves really authentically, really being really honest and brutally um, authentic to, you know, being able to shift our focus and being loving to others. And then the other thing I thought about that we would talk about was happiness. So we've got three topics. I'm sure they can all tie together. But mm -hmm. one of the things that, you know, we were talking to about before the show, and definitely that was the thing that the book was bringing up that I was reading, was that it's nobody's goal to make us happy. If we take you know, and look at our wants and our desires and we bring it down to the, you know, we keep looking at it and we keep bringing it to that place. Usually our intention is to be happy. And, you know, a lot of times when I counsel and look at people with relationship stuff and I often say, you know, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? But the larger consciousness system isn't about making us happy. It's about helping us grow. And so all of these all right. things kind of tie together. So I thought we would look at this. I have no idea what we're going to call this show. Maybe I have no idea. <laughs> grab bag. Yeah, maybe yeah. grab bag. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about that last one then a little okay. bit. Uh, if you are on a, on a quest for happiness, you will probably never find it because happiness is not a destination. Right. You don't end up at happiness. Happiness is not a place that you get to. Happiness is something that happens on the way to you growing up. The more you grow up, the more you become love, the more you get rid of the ego, the more you get rid of the, your beliefs, your fears, then the happier you will be. Right. And the reason you'll be happy is because you no longer will be so judgmental. You won't be uh, thinking that, um, you know, everything is somebody else's fault and so on and so on. And that will make your life a lot happier. But you don't just get to happiness. The right. way to get to be happy is to grow up, become love, get rid of the fear and the ego and the beliefs. And then happiness just happens. It's not something you have to find. It's not a, like, it's not an endpoint. It's the result of a life being lived well, as opposed to a struggle that's never ending. Right. So if you're not working, if you're not getting rid of your fear, if you are full of fear and ego and everything is always somebody else's fault. And, you know, if you get upset or angry, it's because somebody makes you, you know, be angry. Somebody makes you upset. Um, that's just blaming others for your own choices. And if you're like that, then it doesn't matter what you do, what you get or how much of it you get, you won't be happy. Right. Whether you have all the money, you know, more money than you can possibly spend, whether you have more, um, you know, girlfriends or boyfriends or significant others, whether your parents are sweet to you and very nice and you, know, you can have, put all those things together and you still won't be happy. That's not where happiness comes from. Happiness comes from, yeah. from is a byproduct of you getting rid of fear. Mm. And of course, you get rid of fear, you get rid of the ego and the belief. So as you grow up, lower your entropy, you become not so self-centered. It's not all about you. You don't, ha you don't live in a universe where you're at the center of it. And everything else that happens is, ref is referenced to you. You, you live, live in a universe, universe where... where Others, others are really more important. It's not so much about you as it is about how can I help? What can I give? What can I do to be of service? Uh, how can I make this person feel better? Not, oh no, how could they say that about me? That makes me feel bad. See, that's all about me. As mm -hmm. opposed to, well, I wonder why that person feels that way. How could I help them maybe see it some other way? And you don't help somebody see it other way by explaining to them how they're wrong. <laughs> that never works. That just makes it worse. You have to help them grow up in their own way, just like you have to grow up in your way. And that always takes place because you're kind, you're considerate, and you're thinking about them, not about yourself. So that's how you find happiness, is you let happiness come to you. 
you don't have to go search for happiness. Mm. You need to work on growing up, on becoming love, and then happiness just happens. Joy just happens. Yeah. You become I mean, most impossible. Most of the time, happiness is kind of conditional on something. I'll be happy when. Right. Right. And just like you that's, said. Yeah, and that's just the ego right. making an excuse about why you're not happy now. Right. You see? So the ego says, yeah, yeah, but that's just because, you know, once my children get toilet trained and my husband starts picking up his own, you know, his, his uh, dirty laundry and, mm -hmm. you know, this and that, and we have all this list of things that make us unhappy we'll never be happy because it's not those things that make us unhappy. It's because our ego and our fear has us wrapped up around those things. And then we blame them for the unhappiness. We don't blame our ego and our fear. <laughs> you see that gets a ra wrapped up around and attached to those things. That's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. Once you get rid of that fear, you really can't be insulted. People that say mm -hmm. things to you can't hurt your feelings can't insult you, can't make you feel bad. You just don't have any of those negative feelings anymore. If somebody says something rude to you, it's not about you, it's about them. Right. And you have compassion yes. for them, you see? It's, it's like, well, boy, they must be feeling unhappy or, you know, must be feeling full of fear or they wouldn't be, you know, negative like that. So it's not about you at all. And now what can I do to help? You know, is there anything I did to, to that, triggered, I'll use your word, that triggered that, <laughs> you know, that, that created, trigger being a name, uh, just a short word, a way of saying that, that uh, created uh, a, uh, an event that, that made, or that, that uh, they made them choose, I shouldn't say made them choose, doesn't make them choose, but that encouraged them to respond with their fear, mm -hmm. their, their denial or their, uh, you know, justification defense, you know, that made them feel uneasy. So I mean, we're still using that thing, made them feel uneasy. You know, it's not that you make them, but it brought that out in them, made it easy for them to express that and say it that way. It's still their choice. Right. And people have to be responsible for their choices. If you get upset, feel angry, even if you just are anxious, all of those are your choices. It's about your fear, which is about your ego, and your beliefs. It's about your wants, your needs. I want things to be this way. I want people to treat me that way. I want this, that, you know, I need all these things. And that's your fear that if you don't have all those things, well, if people are rude to me, then that means they don't like me. And I'm, that's my fear that people won't like me, or that means that I'm inadequate, or I'm not uh, as good as I need to be, or that somehow I'm failing if I get this negative stuff out of my feedback. So when I hear that negative stuff, well, I push back. I won't, you know, I don't stand for that. I, I push back when I get that negative stuff because I don't want to deal with the fear that I'm inadequate or I'm, I'm not significant or, you know, they don't appreciate me or they don't see that I'm important, you know. How could my husband throw his dirty socks and underwear on the floor if he thought that I was significant or important? Therefore, he must think I'm not important or significant or he wouldn't do that. And I've got this fear about not being important and significant. So now those dirty clothes infuriate me. You <laughs> so see, true. that's why they infuriate you is because you have this fear of not being significant or important. And that's where the fear comes from. So you get over the fear. And then it's not about you when the dirty clothes hit the floor. It's about him when the dirty clothes hit the floor. And what can you do in a very positive way to help him change himself? Not lecture, because that doesn't help anybody change themselves. Mm -hmm. You produce an environment that lets them, encourages them to make better choices. So that's the thing. You see, all your happiness, all the things that upset people are their own fear, their own ego. And that's why they'll never find happiness just by having what they want. Because if they said, okay, I'm magic now and I can wave my fairy wand and my husband now will never throw his dirty clothes on the floor again, thinking that I'm the maid because, you know, that's a trigger for one of my fears that I'm the maid, you know, and uh, therefore not very important. <laughs> well, if you could wave your magic wand and suddenly your husband never threw anything on the floor, 
you still have the fear. You see, you haven't gotten rid of the fear. All you've done is removed a trigger in your environment. Well, now your environment, you feel better, you're happy, you don't get angry as much, but you still have that fear. And that fear will come out in a hundred other ways. Okay, it doesn't come out at the husband anymore because of his clothes, but it'll come out with the husband because he works late. It'll come out with the boss because the boss doesn't do that. It'll come out with your children, it'll come out with all sorts of other things because the fear's still there. You're still unhappy. You still have stress. And if, if there's no stressors in your life, if you don't have any triggers, you'll just be unhappy for no good reason. You'll sit around feeling miserable and unhappy and unfulfilled and unsatisfied, even though there are no triggers in your life. So it's, it's not that if you got rid of all these triggers, all of these things that bring out your ugly emotions or your negative feelings, that then you'd be happy. Not so. You'd still be miserable. You just have a hard time finding somebody to blame <laughs> and you would get more and more wild with your blame. Pretty soon it would be the government. It would be uh, yes. the city officials. It would be, uh, pretty you soon, know. I think, I think people blame the government for pretty much everything. Yeah. Don't they? <laughs> it would be something else. You'd yeah. find somebody else to blame. So if you didn't have anybody in your personal life that you could blame very easily, you, your blame would start getting less and less rational. You start getting mm -hmm. kind of wilder and wilder and other people in your environment would see you as getting a little crazier and crazier <laughs> because now you are blaming things on the weather. You know, you're blaming things <laughs> on the politicians. You're blaming things on the school system. You're blaming your parents. You're blaming your husband's parents. You know, you're blaming people that don't trigger you, but you can imagine somehow that they're at fault because mm -hmm. you still have that fear and you still need to blame somebody because of it, because you that's your ego. You see, the fear creates the ego and, uh, and the beliefs. So you can't be happy just by getting rid, rid of the things that seem to make you angry, that trigger you. You'll find something else to blame. And if you could remove everything, go live in a, go live in a hole in the ground, you know, go live in a cave by yourself. So there's <laughs> nothing else to blame. You'd blame the cave, you'd blame the weather, <laughs> you'd blame all sorts of things because you'd still be unhappy. And if there, if there was absolutely nothing to blame, I don't know how you'd get to a point where there's nothing in your environment at all, but if you yeah. could be, you'd still be unhappy because yeah. you'd still feel insignificant, insecure, you know, not appreciated. All those things would still be there. And you'd be one of these people who just, you know, sits around, and feels miserable. And that misery then, because you couldn't, your ego couldn't blame it on anybody, would start to get referential. You'd feel bad about yourself because what's wrong with me? And that's called depression. Once you start blaming yourself, now we, we're into depression. That's, most people are depressed because they don't really like themselves. They're not too pleased with who they are. That's the core you know, thing in, mm -hmm. in depression. So... Yes, you could go live in a hole in the ground someplace and be depressed, but that's not exactly happiness. So you see, the only way to find happiness is a byproduct of getting rid of your fear. There's no other way to do it. It's not about other people being your triggers. It's about you have the fear that creates that trigger. Get rid of the fear, the trigger's gone. The emotions are gone. Now, when somebody's rude to you or does things that make you feel insignificant, it's not about you. It's about them. Right. And you're not angry. You're not upset. In fact, you have compassion. You know that they are struggling. They're not happy. You are. They're not. And it causes them to act in ways that are unpleasant. But, you know, that's them. And maybe you can give them a safe, secure, loving environment so that they can help make better choices. Maybe you can't, but then you just live with them being that way. It's all right. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just the way they are. And you have to deal with people as they are in your life. That's part of growing up as well. You realize there's lots of people in your life. Some of them aren't going to be very nice. Some of them will be very nice but you just have to live with them as positively and as well as you can with lots of grace and understanding and let them be. So it, they can't make you unhappy. So you're fundamentally happy inside. So there isn't anything out there in an outside world that really 
makes you unhappy. So now your happiness is like assured every day in every situation. You live in a state of joy and peace and happiness, but it's not because you went out seeking happiness. It's because you went to get rid of the fear and you were successful in getting rid of the fear. So that's the only way to be happy is to get rid of your fear. Right. No other way to do it. And all of the people in your life and all the things that you think are happening to you are really just an opportunity for you to see that this is where you're unhappy. <laughs> this is why, you know, this is, these are the fears that you need to let go of. These are, that's exactly what the larger consciousness system, if I understand it correctly, is helping us with. If we come here and we have, you know, a goal to move towards love, we chose certain core wounds that are really our sacred opportunity to look at, you know, whether it's separation or not good enough or whatever it is that we chose to look at and really examine that will always be the go-to thing that we do. It's because that larger consciousness system, that part of who we are connected to is just helping us grow. Gives us opportunity. Right. So it it gives us opportunity, but we have to reach out and take that opportunity right. and do something with it. Right. It can't do, do it, it for, for us. us. Right. You see, see you can't, can't say, just, just make me better, you know, make me happy. Well, it's not like that. You have to make yourself happy. You have to get rid of that fear and nobody else can do it. And if, if you don't put effort toward it, <clears throat> it won't happen. It's not one of those things that, oh, one day the fear will just disappear because it hardly ever works that way. <laughs> you have to get rid of it. You have to own it, which means you have to realize that that is a fear of yours. You do fear that people, you know, don't think highly of you or don't consider you enough, that you, that you, are, you are the maid or you are inconsequential or not as important or significant as other people, you know, and that's a fear. That's a fear that you are that way. Well, you know, the only reason you feel that is because you have the fear that you are that way. Own the fear. Say, okay, that's one of my fears. I, I fear that I may be inadequate, insignificant, not good enough. That's a fear. And then secondly, you have to have the, well, on that step one, not only do you have to own it, but look at what it causes in your life. Look at what that fear does. Just go through your life, all the times that you're triggered by that fear. What's that fear doing to you? And you will see that all of it is bad. None of it is really helpful. When you look at your life, say, okay, here was a time where that fear, you know, really kind of took charge and made my decisions for me. And here's where and here, and you look at it and all of them will be unhappy moments in your life. And then once you realize that fear is making me unhappy. I make very poor choices because of that fear. And those choices tend to make everything worse, not better. When mm -hmm. I react with that fear, everything gets worse. So now you have to have the courage to just not do that anymore. Don't react mm -hmm. with that fear. And when it comes up and you feel that, that uh, defense coming up or that uh, anger coming up, stop it. Don't voice it. Just stop it and say, no, I don't want to be like that. And don't be like that. Don't do it. And that will be hard. And it'll come up over and over again. And you'll find yourself stopping it. And you'll think, well, am I ever going to get to the point that it doesn't come up anymore? And yes, you will. As long as you have a focused intent on changing yourself to where that doesn't inform your choices anymore, you will eventually get there. The fear will go away. And you'll find out that it was just smoke all the time. You were perfectly adequate. You're perfectly mm -hmm. successful. You're perfectly capable. That that was just a fear that had no substance to it. All these fears are paper tigers. They're not real tigers. They're just paper tigers. It's just smoke. And once you accept it and have the courage to go on and, and, uh, and not be that way, then they just go away. And eventually, lots of effort. Now, that eventually could be three weeks. It could be three years. You depends on how strong your intent is and how hard you work on it. But 
you will get rid of that fear. And when you do, you'll feel like a great weight just lifted off your shoulders. You no longer have that problem with being insecure. That's right. just not an issue anymore. And all the things that used to upset you, they don't upset you anymore. Not only that, but all the people around you that used to not be very nice, they all seem to be a whole lot nicer. Well, that's because you now don't interpret the things they do and say as being not nice anymore. Right. You interpret them as struggles that they're having, issues that they need to deal with, fears that they have, and you may even be able to help them get over it. And then everything in your life and all the people in your life all seem to get better all together. And now you're happy, but it's not because you sought out happiness. It's because you sought out your fear and got rid of it. So I don't know. We've said that a whole lot, but we maybe, have. maybe this way is a little clearer <laughs> than we said it this time. Yeah, right. And you know, we'll all come up with our justifications. We all have experiences that will anchor our paper taggers. Like we all have that thing that we can go back to. It's just, it's like learning how, and it, learning how to laugh at yourself is one of the easiest ways, but to get to that place, you really have to be, I don't know if it's aware, but really have to see how every time it's exact same issue and it's exact same thing. And here I am in the exact same place. And can I make a different choice? Like it's really about, you know, stop trying to justify because we can justify it. We can blame, we can justify it from everything right. that's ever happened. And that's the story. That's that thing. Right. That's that the story. That's that ego. That's, that's the ego's us. job. Yeah. 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 And the ego is strong. I mean, in this physical world, it's a strong part of our personality right. just because, well, just because, I mean, I can't think of any way that we've been brought up that, that the ego hasn't been included, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, yeah. it's a hard one to sort of just say, okay, maybe we can give it a higher function. Uh, maybe we can, you know, we can make it a positive thing, but we want to be right all the time. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we identify, identify with that ego. That ego is us. That's our identity. That's our story, our identity. That's who we are. Right. We're the poor little suffering person that never gets treated very well, you <laughs> see. And the reason is because of, these, uh, because of all these other awful, arrogant, you know, unpleasant, unthoughtful or, you know, people out there. That's the reason. Right. And the fact that we're upset and angry, we justify it. Of course, we would be angry. Look, listen to what that person said about me. You know, they, that, uh, that was terrible. So we justify everything and we don't see how it could be any other way. Right. You see, but as long as we keep doing that and living out of that ego and it can't be any other way, well, that just dooms us to another day of misery. You right. see, because if you don't change, you shouldn't expect that anything else will change. You know, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to keep getting the same result over and over. Actually, it's not even that good. Your result <laughs> keeps getting worse and worse <laughs> because things get worse. They get harder to take. And eventually 45 or 50 years later of you struggling in this ego, now you're just downright crabby. You see, <laughs> now you're hard to get along with. Now you are, you know, you've, it's changed you. It's made you mm -hmm. negative. You see the world through negative glasses. Right. You look for the hurt and the wrong and the, and the problem in everything. Uh, you've stopped even thinking there may be something right in the world. And you just become an angry, sour, unhappy person. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that it just stays the same. It gets worse. Yeah. So you have to get rid of that or you'll just kind of in that downward spiral. It'll get worse and worse until you you know, have a nervous breakdown, you know, you do something dramatic to change your life and then it'll seem like it'll be better for a little while. And eventually it'll start to go just the same place right. again, because all you've done is rearrange the furniture on the <laughs> Titanic. You haven't really <laughs> solved the problem. You've just made it all look better for a while. So you've changed. Okay. You divorced that last guy and now yeah. you got a new guy and you live in a nice little house in the suburbs with three dogs and, you know, and everything seems to be great. But 10 years later, you're not very happy and it's back in about the same spot and it keeps getting worse. That's because you still got that fear. You haven't grown up any. 
changing your outside world isn't going to make you happy. It'll change things for a while and it may make you feel happier for a short time, but eventually you'll end up in the same place because that's who you are. That fear is defining you. And unless you get rid of the fear, that's the way it's going to define you. And you know, we push these fears under the rug. Our, our ego mm-hmm. helps us helps us put them where we can't see them. You know, we mm-hmm. blame everybody else for things rather than seeing our own fear. But eventually, when you pile all that nasty stuff under the rug long enough, that rug starts to have real big lumps in it. <laughs> and it gets hard to keep putting more stuff under there. And that's when we become unpleasant people living Mm -hmm. a struggle, unhappy, and we sit around thinking, well, I can't wait to get out of here, you know, let me off of this merry-go-round, I don't want to be here anymore, Mm -hmm. life just is so unpleasant, you know, life sucks, everything, you know, has has never been that good for me, you know, woe is me, poor little me, you know, back, uh, you know, right where you always have been, the center of your universe, feeling sorry for yourself. That's the way it goes. That's going to be where you're headed. If you're not there yet, that's where you're going as you don't get rid of the fears. You know, how many uh, old people do you know who just aren't very happy, who are kind of crotchety and, you know, they, they don't, I mean, they get through life day by day, but they're not really happy. Right. Well, that's because they never did get rid of that fear. And guess what? After they die, they get to do it again. (laughs) They get to try again and try again. And they keep getting to try again until they make some progress. You see, Mm -hmm. so it's not a time test. You know, Mm -hmm. you get all the, all the chances you need to work on it. But if you never do it, you're kind of stuck in your consciousness evolution. You can't get past that point. And all your lives are just this constant string of struggle. Mm -hmm. So. You know, so not only does it make your present life a struggle, it's going to make your next life a struggle too, and the <laughs> one after that. So, you know, you might as well do the hard work and, you know, find the fear and get rid of it. You find the fear by looking at anything negative in your life, any negative feeling you have, any anger, any upset, any stress, mm-hmm. any annoyance, any feelings of being, you know, uh, uh, not treated well not getting what you deserve, not being appreciated, all of those things are tied to a fear. So if you ever have any negative feelings, well, there's your fear. And go find the fear. And if you don't, please talk to me. (laughs) (laughs) Find that fear and get rid of it. You see, it's an important thing to do. That's why we're here. That's the point of this life is to get rid of those fears. Right. So it's, you know, I I almost get to the point that I I can't see why people would not choose to get rid of the fear other than the fact that they're full of fear. And (laughs) they're so full of fear that they can't get rid of the fear because they're so into their story and their excuses and their blame and their sad woe is me that they just have a hard time breaking out of that story to be different. It's not about just acting different. It's about being different. You have to change. When you get rid of a fear, you're not the same person anymore. Right. It's not that just you've learned how to stuff that fear down further down so it's, it's you know, it doesn't bother you anymore. That's not the point. We're not stuffing fear down out of sight. We're getting rid of it. And when you get rid of it, you are a different person. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to grow up and that means become a different person, somebody without that fear. And Mm -hmm. that growth then is real. And you take that growth into your next experience packet. That growth goes with you. Right. Right. And so everything is still working to assist us. It's just that we get caught up in this story that we've created. And we really have a hard time not being able to see. Because, like I said, we can justify. I mean, we can... We, we all have been in that room where we're talking about our problems and it's never, oh my, I have this huge fear. And so it keeps <laughs> showing up in my life. It's, oh my, you know, this person did this and that happened. And, you know, and then the people are like, oh my God, that must've been awful. And, you know, it's, it, there's just never this time where we're, you know, really being able to look at it, especially if we're 
if we're trying to get support from others, which we like to do as a society, especially if something happens in a significant relationship or, you know, we're miserable, so we want to blame it on somebody. Um, and then we get to the, I guess we tied those, the first and last question very nicely together. And then the authentic question, I get, I understand the authentic because we really do have to get to that place where we can authentically look at who we are. And that's, I guess yeah. that that stage before, you know, being able to say, okay, and laugh at ourselves and say, yeah, right. I'm, I'm growing that, up and now focusing on other, but. Yeah. Becoming authentic is part of that, that process of getting rid of the fear actually. Yeah. So step one is to realize you have fear <laughs> and that fear is mostly the motivation you have for almost every choice you make. All the things you do, all the choices that you make in a day, most of those are made by your fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, And becoming authentic has to do with just saying, well, okay, who, you know, who am I? What am I? And most people have no idea who am I because they are, they, like we said, they, you identify with your ego. Right. You're your ego. You're your story. You know, your story, your ego, your beliefs, that's who you are. Well, you see, that's not who we are. That's just the way we see ourselves. That's our projection of us. Yeah. That's our story. It's just a story. It's mm -hmm. not us. It's just a story about us. But we believe that that's us. So it's that ego and our beliefs that become our image. It's mm -hmm. what we think of ourselves. Oh, poor little person. You know, they have all this, this hardship in life, things to overcome. And that's the way we see ourselves. That's our definition. Well, all of that is, is nonsense. That's all coming out of our ego. It's all coming out of our intellect. It's what we think about ourselves. It's not who we are. So becoming authentic means letting that story go and saying, all right, at the bottom level, then, or just who am I? What do I feel about? And why do I feel that way? Okay, so somebody makes you angry and you say, uh-oh, anger, that's a negative. That's tied to a fear. <laughs> All right. Well, let's look at that fear. All right. That's a fear of, say, being inadequate. All right. Well, who am I? The authentic thing then is to say, well, you know, let's, let's just assume I'm inadequate. Okay. If, if I've got this fear that I'm inadequate, let's just say, all right, I am inadequate. Now, live with that. Accept it. That's what I mean when I say own it. Own that fear. You have to say, all right, that's me. I have this fear. I'm afraid I am inadequate. And because I have this fear of afraid of being inadequate, I interpret all kinds of things as people telling me I'm inadequate, like the dirty clothes on the floor makes me feel like the maid because that's my fear of being inadequate. You see, it's not because he just throws these clothes around because he's just, that's just not part of his reality, you know, that you clean things up. It doesn't have anything to do with you being a maid. <laughs> It has to do with him and his lack of appreciation, his lack, I shouldn't say appreciation, his lack of understanding of the bigger picture and how he affects that bigger picture. He's just not plugged in to how he's making you feel like that. He doesn't intend to make you feel that way. <laughs> so, you know, it's that sort of thing. You're, you are interpreting all that. So you have to say, okay, I'm inadequate. And that inadequacy makes me angry sometimes. That inadequacy is what makes me, you know, not get along with some of my coworkers because I feel like they're stealing my stuff or they're taking my glory or using my ideas. See, poor, poor little me, I'm inadequate and I do these things, but other people use me. Everybody uses me, you know, that sort of thing is just your fear. Well, own it, say, okay, I have that fear and it makes me feel this way. Now, what am I going to do about it? Do I just keep the fear and keep feeling that way? Or would I like to feel differently? And then is when you try to stop with, when you feel those feelings coming on, you just let it go and say, no, I'm not going there. I'm not going to feel like that. Change the subject in your mind or just feel differently or put it aside, but keep that intent. I need to get rid of that feeling. Okay. I'm inadequate. Let me be inadequate, but I don't need to be angry about it. Let me just accept it. Well, very shortly, you'll find out you're not inadequate at all. <laughs> It was just a fear, you see, but as long as you don't accept it, if you, as long as you're not honest at who you are, then you're always afraid 
that it's that that's that way you see but this honesty this being being authentic means being who you are and after that you kind of let the chips fall where they may this is the way i am and then if those chips fall in kind of a negative place figure well i need to change the way i am because when i'm just the way i am i'm not very nice <laughs> things you know my life gets unpleasant why is that how is it the way i am is not very nice oh i'm belligerent oh i you know i blame people well i need to change that you see so now you're being authentic rather than justifying see the difference mm -hmm. one of them the ego justifies and okay i'm i'm rude or i'm nasty or i'm whatever because i have to be because people are like that you blame them justify your actions that's the ego justifying the mm -hmm. opposite of that is being authentic when you say yeah i am that way that's not a good way to be <laughs> i need to be different than that you see now you're being an authentic person not justifying it you're owning it i need to let that go i just need to let that go i can't change other people other people are who they are i can only change myself i need to let go that these things upset me and make me angry see so that's accepting the fear and dealing with it rather than hiding the fear blaming others there's no fear there it's not me it's them you see, it's just the opposite of the of the ego. The kind of anti-ego is to is to be authentic. Just be who you are. And if who you are is not the way you'd like to be, then change it. Don't be that way. Don't react that way. Catch yourself and don't go there. Catch yourself getting angry and say, no, let that anger go. It's okay. That's just my anger. I create that anger because I have this fear. Just let that go. And eventually the, you will have that anger less and less and less and it'll go away. So that's, that's what being authentic means. It means just being you. The average person has no idea who they are. If you say be authentic, they think, what would that be? Mm -hmm. Who am I? I have no idea because I'm the story. I'm this ego and these beliefs and that's who I, who I am. No, but that's not who you are. There's somebody else living in there that's miserable, that's struggling, trying to get along, and it's that ego and beliefs that are creating all the problem. You know, ego and beliefs are both products of fear. The fear creates the ego and the, and the belief. So you get rid of the fear and the ego and beliefs go away that are attached to that fear. So that's the authentic thing. And yes, the authentic thing is about yourself in the sense you're saying, who am I? And that at the same time you see so you, you're being authentic but it's not like your whole life is nothing but being authentic you're still interacting with other people you're still caring and if you care about other people and you say okay other people do rude things they throw their dirty clothes on the floor or they uh, you know take my ideas and get to the boss before I do or something else then you have to just say well that is just the way they are they do it for their own reasons but I don't have to make up those reasons as they're doing it despite me, or they're doing it because I'm the maid and I'm insignificant, or they're doing it, you know, to get me, you know, I have to stop making myself the reason for everything. You know, I stop, stop making myself the center of all activity. It's all about me. And it, they're just doing it because that's the way they are and let them be how they are. Well, that means maybe you need to, you know, go to the boss first when you have an idea before you tell anybody. <laughs> maybe that's a different strategy. Next time I get a good idea, instead of saying, hey, guys, I got a good idea, you just need to go into the boss and tell the boss about your good idea. <laughs> so there's different ways that you can be, you see, that now you don't have to deal with that struggle. You've changed the story. Well, the reason that you had to tell all your friends first about your idea was you felt too insignificant and too inadequate to just go into the boss without telling your coworkers first and kind of getting their feedback, trying to work up your nerve, you see, to go see the boss. So it's your fear. You see, it was your fear that created the problem in the first place. Well, once you accept that and say, okay, I'm inadequate maybe, but you know, I've got this idea. I'm going to go tell the boss. Now, so you're being different. So it changes everything. Um, you know, who knows? These other people may say, well, poor little Susie, she has good ideas, but she's too weenie in her own mind to ever go tell the boss. So I'll go tell him, you know, and maybe they're even giving attribute. 
maybe they're saying, yeah, you know, Weenie Susie told me this, boss, it's a good idea. And the boss may take it, but the boss may not be grown up enough himself to go over to Susie and say, that was really a good idea you had. You know, Jane told me about your idea. That may never, the feedback may never, may never get back to her. Right. It's just the way it is, you see, because people are how they are and doing what they do. So you have to stop making up all these stories and just be authentic, live your life, find the fear, get rid of it, and then happiness will be yours. It just comes to you. It's a byproduct of doing the right thing for the right reason, being authentic. Right. And sometimes, I mean, it's a, it's a issue of, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Can you be, can you accept other people for who they are? And does that help you love yourself more? Like sometimes, I don't know, like sometimes it may help <laughs> if you, you know, can be kind and generous and loving to others, not the doormat. We know what that is. That's a fear. Um, but to mm. honestly be authentically loving and caring and kind to other people. Does that help you, you know, get rid of some of your own fears of being inadequate? So sometimes it, I, I mean, and I don't know necessarily what works better. Um, cause I think truly when those fears arise of, of us being insecure and inadequate, which pretty much everybody has, you know, mostly it's because we see ourselves as that somewhere inside some belief, some fear that is being, you know, shown to us. Maybe sometimes it helps, you know, trying really hard to be authentic and accepting and caring to others. Um, yeah, it does, it does go together because when you, yeah. when you let others be who they are, then you don't blame them for being, you know, who they are. It's like, that's just who they are. I accept that. Okay. And some people are just rude. Some people are very <laughs> thoughtless. Some people yes. are just annoying. You know, I mean, that's the way they are. Right. But it's your thing to deal with that right. in a positive way. You right. see, okay, that's the way they are. And if they are that way, then I need to deal with that. What's the positive way to deal with it? Okay, my husband just is that he just takes off his clothes and throws them on the floor. It's just the way he is. You're right. How am I going to deal with that in a positive way? Well, right. in a positive way, you can just pick it up off the floor and put it in a dirty clothes basket. And that's fine. It only took you a few seconds, you see. But it's that fear that says, oh, I can't do that. I'd be the maid. You see, mm -hmm. that's your fear. Makes you not be able to do that. I'll have to complain. I'll have to fuss. I'll have to make him do it differently because I have this fear and he has to do it differently because of my fear. You see, you don't, you, instead of going there, just pick it up. It's not a big deal. Right. It's your fear that makes picking it up the problem. Right. See, once you get rid of the fear, so you can say, well, it's just the way he is. It's not the personal insult to me. It's just the way he is. So pick it up. And as you pick it up and are positive about it. Now he notices okay. that. And when he notices that, he may say, well, you know, maybe I ought to do that myself. That's, you know, he then can change. But as long as you're complaining about it, right. now it's his ego versus your ego. You see, mm -hmm. somebody's complaining about what he does and he has to justify that what he's doing is right and a good thing to do. And it really isn't a big problem after all. And now his ego, you see, is, is doing that to him. Your ego is you're the maid and then, then you're not going to pick those damn things up. He can pick them up himself. And now you see you have this big problem. Right. Well, if you just pick it up joyfully, it's not right. a problem because you accept him. It's just the way he is. It's not saying anything about you. It's saying something about him. So you do it. That gives him the opportunity to not deal with it with his justification and his ego and his fear. And now suddenly he can see it and say, oh, you know, I ought to maybe pick up after myself a little better. And you put him in an environment where he can change as opposed to where he's always defensive. Mm -hmm. And it's his ego being defensive against your ego that's being defensive. And that never goes anywhere, you see. So the idea is to, yes, you need to be authentic, but you need to interact with people in such mm -hmm. a way that 
you do the best you can, you know, you're as positive as you can in that situation. Now, sometimes the most positive thing you can do is not be around somebody <laughs> that you find really annoying. You know, the way to deal with that is to avoid them. Go someplace else. Well, if it happens to be your husband, that's hard to do. You can avoid them. Now you have to deal with it and deal with it positively. You see, yes. not deal with it out of your own fear and ego. That's just throwing gasoline on a fire. That's making it harder for him to grow up, harder for you to grow up. That's why everything gets worse if people act like that. So you say, how in this situation can I best deal with it? And if it's like, well, it's my neighbor, really annoys me. Well, don't go out and stand by the fence, you know, <laughs> next to their yard and, you know, start a conversation. If right. that annoys you, then go to the other fence or, you know, just walk <laughs> right out the door and go to your car and just don't have that chat. Right. Because that's one way to deal with it. And that's maybe as positive a way as you can. If it's your boss and your coworkers, well, you have to deal with them in a professional way. So you deal with them professionally. You, that may be the best thing you can do. But when you stop whining and blaming and having the story about poor, poor little you and all the you know, bad things that come your way, suddenly you'll find people just kind of change and they treat you a lot better and they're more considerate of you and whatever because you're not now engaging their ego and their defensiveness. They're more open to be able to, to interact with you in a better, more positive way too. So just change yourself. Don't worry about changing somebody else. Accept what you have to accept. If you live with a guy who, who won't pick up his, his underwear, then accept that. That comes with the package. Okay, accept it and go on. Right. That's what you can do if you don't have this fear. If you have the fear, you can't accept it because it says something bad mm -hmm. about you, something, something you fear, you see. So if you can accept it, well, that's life. We have mm -hmm. to accept things sometimes with people that we have to deal with. And we do that in a positive way. And then we go on, you see, and we'll find that everything gets better then. You know, life just gets better once we get rid of our fear. And the bonus is that other people will now start to grow up and start interacting with us in entirely different ways. They, part of they are the way they are is because we are the way we are. Right. And all of it is, a, is an interaction going on. So you just be as good as you can be without your fear and let them be however they are. And you have to live with that gracefully. If you can't live with that gracefully, then go find somebody else to live with. Go change your situation. But if you just need to find somebody else to live with because their fear doesn't work well with your fear, well, that's probably not going to work. It's just <laughs> going to end up in the same way. And it's, you know, if you're not getting rid of your fear in the process, it's a very low probability that that's actually going to solve things. It'll just right. put everything off and <laughs> you'll get that same old crud because you'll have that same old fear. Right. The, your problem is your fear. Your problem isn't other people's fears. That's their problem. Your problem is just your fear. Fix yourself. Let everybody else be however they are. And that will optimize the way everybody else begins to treat you. They'll start seeing you and interacting with you differently. So it's not like, oh, I'll just be everybody's doormat. Every, I'll do everything and everybody will take advantage of me. It's not like that. That When you do that, that's more fear. That's fear if I don't do it, it, you know, things will get worse. You know, I need to do everything for everybody. Otherwise, it would be a disaster. <laughs> be yourself. Just be authentic and see what happens. See if it's a disaster or not. If you, you know, if you need to be able to be authentic and learn from your mistakes, See what happens. Just be. And if living very positively and letting everybody be who they are just doesn't work out in some relationships, well, let go of the relationship. Have a different relationship or approach it differently or realize there's just limitations to it. And that relationship will never be but so deep or so meaningful than this. You know, it's just as far as you're going to go with that. And accept that. And accept that. Oh, okay. You know, with grace, not with, oh no, it's not what I want. You see, well, what I want goes back to ego. It right. just has to be what it is. And if you can accept things, then you can see how that would lead to your not being angry and upset about stuff anymore because right. you've accepted what you can't change. You've changed what you can. You're growing up. You're getting rid of your fear and 
move on. Life will be good. Eventually, after a few years of, of you know, get, after getting rid of your fears, you'll see your whole life will be different. The people in it will be different. And you think that, you know, that they all decided to change for some reason, but you're the key there. As you change, they'll change. And the nice thing about the acceptance is we all have examples in our lives of times when we've been accepting, right? Like when you started that relationship that now has, you know, all these problems, all these problems were likely still there in the beginning. You just accepted them differently. Or if you see a child that, you know, goes through temper tantrums, you accept them differently than, you know, something that has been harboring and you have had these intentions and these fears that have been, you know, grating on you because your fears have to get bigger for you to see them, which is part of why everything is here because we're here to grow up. So, you know, that part about acceptance, you have examples of acceptance all the time. So if you sure. can't really find your way, it's just because you're just not looking at it the proper the way that you need to look at it. Yes. Right? I mean, we have examples of acceptance. So we can do it. <laughs> we may yes. think it's hard, and it is hard. Well, it is hard, but the, the yeah. thing is, Simple, just do not it. Simple, easy. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Just start somewhere. You don't have to, you know, it's like you don't have to know how. You don't need instructions. Like, well, how do I start? You know, what's the first thing? You don't need a plan. You don't need a prescription. Just do it, and it will find its own way. As long as you really want to grow up and get rid of your fears, it will all settle out and work out you know, exactly how it should. Right. So you don't need a plan. You don't need anybody to say, well, here's step one, you know, do this. <laughs> because now you're back to the intellect doing mm -hmm. things, not to the changing mm -hmm. at the being level. So you don't really need a plan. Just do it, live it, be authentic. Try it, you know, see, find your fears, let them go. Right. And you don't need to know how to do that. You just need to want to do that enough that you start doing it. Right, right. Well, Tom, can you believe that an hour has gone by? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. And we probably didn't even get all of your all all of your original questions, did we? Oh, I think we did. We did because you tied the first and the last one together just by just by talking. So, no, you did. We did, and and, and I appreciate it. So, okay. So, if you don't know Tom yet, please go to his website, mybigtoe.com. Get his books, a trilogy of My Big Toe theory of everything. Um, check out his YouTube because, you know, I think there's, you know, close to 500 and probably by the end of this trip, there will be <laughs> once they're all up. Um, hours and hours and hours and hours of fun that you can uh, look at. But uh, yeah, so take an opportunity. Tom is this amazing individual that has a wealth of knowledge and and experience and he knows what he's talking about so it's always helped me and i love doing these shows and anyway yeah, there, well there's a lot of those videos up there you know if people say oh 500 videos where do i start you know that's intimidating <laughs> well you can start with a whole series of them that are with Lori. there you go <laughs> you know that would be a good place because Lori talks about relationship and uh, so when i talk with Lori, i'm focused also on relationship and the mechanics of that relationship and how it works. So if that's what interests you, then look up at the ones that are with Lori. And um, there was another series I did uh, with uh, Evita Octel, and she is mostly about relationship too. Um, a little different. Some sometimes she goes a little different space than that, but uh, much of hers is also about relationship. And you could look at those. And other than that, the the other 400 or so that are that are out there, just kind of pick and choose and uh, read the little caption of what they're about and just listen and uh, you will eventually uh, one will lead to the another and to the another and you'll begin to get the whole big big picture if you're if you're really interested nice all right well we are on every month unless tom goes away on vacation again soon um <laughs> So you have been listening to News for the Heart. Thank you very much, Tom. We've been getting to the heart of what matters, and we'll be back next month. Next month. Have a question for Lori and want to be on the next News from the Heart show? Drop us a line via instant feedback at bmajor.org. News from the Heart is brought to you by Intuitive Soul and is produced by Major Radio for Clear Channel's iHeartRadio and bmajor.org. 